little fox. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Chapter One: Down the Rabbit Hole. On a golden summer afternoon, Alice sat by the river. Her older sister Charlotte sat beside her, happily reading a book. Feeling bored, Alice glanced at her sister's book. What's the point of a book without pictures? Alice asked. Charlotte was too busy reading to reply. <sighs> Alice gave a tired sigh and thought about making a daisy chain. However, that would require getting up to pick the daisies, and the hot day was making Alice feel very tired and lazy. Suddenly, a rabbit ran past the two girls. He was white and wore a colorful vest. Oh dear! Oh dear! He cried, "I'm going to be late." Alice was so sleepy that she didn't think a talking animal was strange. But then the white rabbit pulled a watch from his vest pocket. Rabbits don't wear vests, Alice said to herself, and they certainly don't carry watches. Alice jumped up and ran after the white rabbit. Near a hedge, he popped down a large rabbit hole. Alice followed right after him, not thinking about how she'd get out. Suddenly, she was falling. Help! Alice cried. She felt as if she were falling down a deep well. It was too dark to see anything below, so Alice looked around as she fell. The rabbit hole was lined with cupboards and shelves. Maps and pictures decorated the walls. Alice grabbed a jar labeled "orange jam" from one shelf. She was disappointed to discover it was empty. Oh! If I drop this jar, it might kill somebody below. Alice said. She slipped it onto the next shelf she passed. Alice continued to fall. After this. I'll never get upset about just falling down some stairs. Why, I won't even complain if I fall off the roof. Down, down, down. Would this fall ever end? How many miles have I fallen by now? Alice said. I must be getting near the center of the Earth. What if I fall right through the Earth? Where would she end up? Alice tried to remember her geography lessons. I'll just have to ask the first person I meet. I'll say, "Please, ma'am, is this New Zealand or Australia?" Alice was silent for a while, but then she started thinking about Dinah, her cat. I hope someone remembers to feed Dinah tonight. Alice said aloud. Oh, Dinah, I wish you were here. There aren't any mice in the air, but you might catch a bat. Do cats eat bats? Do bats eat cats? Alice didn't know the answer to either question, and she was feeling so so tired. She was beginning to dream that she was walking hand in hand with Dinah. Thump! Suddenly, Alice landed on a pile of sticks and dry leaves. Oh! She wasn't hurt, so she jumped right up. Ahead, the white rabbit was hurrying down a long passage. I'd better catch up with that rabbit. Alice ran as fast as she could. Oh, my ears and whiskers! It's getting very late. The white rabbit said as he turned a corner. Alice turned the corner too, but the white rabbit had disappeared. She was now in a long, low hall with doors lining both walls. Lamps hanging from the ceiling dimly illuminated the hall. The white rabbit must have gone through one of these doors, Alice said. She walked down one side of the hall, trying every door. They were all locked. She walked up the other side of the hall. Those doors were locked too. Alice stood sadly in the middle of the hall. How will I ever get out of here? She cried. 
Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Chapter Two, A Strange Drink. Looking around the dimly lit hall, Alice spotted a glass table. On top of it lay a tiny gold key. I wonder if this will unlock a door, Alice said as she picked up the key. She tried the key in every door on both sides of the hall. It was too small, but Alice didn't give up. She tried again, and this time she discovered a small curtain. Hmm. This wasn't here before, Alice said, pulling aside the curtain. Behind it was a door about 15 inches high, and the tiny gold key fit perfectly. Alice opened the door and knelt down. She peered through a small passage to a beautiful garden. Wow! That's the loveliest garden I've ever seen, she said. Look at those flowers and that fountain. Alice wanted to wander through the garden, but she was too big. She wished she could make herself small enough to fit through the door. I'm sure I could. If only I knew how to begin, she said. So many strange things had already happened that nothing seemed impossible anymore. There is no point in waiting by the little door, Alice thought. She headed back to the table. Maybe there will be another key, or instructions for shrinking myself, Alice said. Instead, she found a bottle which had definitely not been there before. Tied around its neck was a paper label. Drink me, it said in large, beautiful letters. I'm not going to drink some strange liquid, Alice said. That could be poison. Alice examined the label carefully, but there was no mention of poison. So she decided to take a sip. Mmm, that's delicious. Alice licked her lips. It's like a mixture of cherry tart, pineapple, roast turkey, and buttered toast. Alice liked the liquid so much that she soon finished the whole bottle. And then something strange began to happen. What an odd feeling. Alice looked around her. I seem to be shrinking. And indeed, Alice was only 10 inches high, but she was not upset. She was now the perfect size to fit through the little door. Alice was eager to enter the garden, but she waited a few minutes. I want to be sure I've finished shrinking, she said. What if I keep shrinking until there's nothing left of me? Fortunately for Alice, that didn't happen. So she walked over to the little door, which had mysteriously closed again. Alice reached in her pocket for the key. Oh no! I left the key on the table! Alice raced back to the table. She could see the key quite clearly through the glass, but there was no way she could reach it. Trying to climb one of the glass legs, Alice slid back to the floor. The leg was so slippery. Still, she kept trying until she was exhausted. Alice sat down and cried, but that only lasted for a minute. Crying won't help you, Alice said to herself. She wiped her eyes. Now there was a glass box under the table. Inside was a cake with the words, eat me, spelled out in raisins. If this cake makes me grow larger, I can reach the key, Alice said. If I grow smaller, I can creep under the door. Either way, I'll get into that garden. Alice took a bite and nothing happened. She was very disappointed because she now expected strange things to occur. This is a useless cake, Alice said. 
but she ate it all anyway. And then she began to grow. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Chapter 3, The Pool of Tears. Things are getting stranger by the minute, Alice said as she kept growing. When she looked down, her feet were almost out of sight. Goodbye, feet, Alice said. I wonder who will put on your shoes and socks. I will be much too far away to help you. Then she began to worry. What if her feet wouldn't walk where she wanted to go? I must be nice to them. I'll give them a new pair of boots every Christmas. But it will seem strange to send presents to my own feet. Oh dear, I am talking nonsense. Just then her head hit the whole ceiling. Alice kept growing. She was more than nine feet tall, but she wasn't upset. Now she was big enough to reach the gold key on the glass table. Alice picked up the key and hurried to the garden door. Poor Alice. She was so big. If she lay on her side, she could look into the garden with one eye. As for getting into the garden, that was harder than ever. Alice started to cry again. <laughs> <laughs> she tried scolding herself, but that only made her cry harder. Alice cried buckets of tears. A large pool formed around her, four inches deep and spreading halfway down the hall. After a while, Alice heard footsteps in the distance. She quickly wiped her eyes so she could see who was coming. It was the White Rabbit wearing a jacket and carrying white gloves and a fan. He trotted through the dark hall, muttering to himself. The Duchess, the Duchess, she'll be very angry if I've kept her waiting. Alice was feeling very desperate by now. She was willing to ask for help from anyone, even a talking rabbit. She waited until the white rabbit was nearby before speaking in a quiet, timid voice. Please, sir. Startled, the white rabbit dropped his gloves and fan. He ran as fast as he could into the darkness. Alice picked up the rabbit's things. She began to fan herself because the hall was very hot. How strange everything is today, Alice said. Yesterday, everything was normal. I wonder if I somehow changed overnight. I almost think I did feel a little different this morning. Alice continued to fan herself. Maybe I've been changed into another person. She thought about all her friends. She hadn't been changed into any of them. Alice burst into tears again. <laughs> I wish Charlotte would look down this rabbit hole and call my name. I'm so tired of being here all alone. As she said this, she looked down. She saw that she'd put on one of the white rabbit's gloves. How can his glove fit me? I must be shrinking again. Alice ran back to the table and stood next to it for comparison. She decided that she was about two feet high. And she was continuing to shrink. It must be the fan, Alice said. She dropped it to save herself from completely disappearing. That was a narrow escape. And now for the garden. Alice ran back to the garden door. But it was locked again, and she didn't have the key. She searched the hall and found the key on the glass table. How did the key get here? Alice looked up at it in despair. Things are worse than ever because I've never been this small before. Just as she said this, her foot slipped. Whoa! Alice fell up to her chin in salt water.
little thought.